Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our A4E Skyhawk and we're looking at the radar. So the first thing to note is that it is an air-to-ground radar, not an air-to-air -air radar. Very basic in operation, but it's actually really cool, really fun to use. And I found it really helps to explain how radars work to people because it's such a simplified radar as compared to something new like an F-18 or an F-15 or something like that. So we're going to be using it for two tasks essentially. One is to avoid terrain. So if we're flying at night, in mountains and stuff like that or fog or bad weather or any reason like that where we're going to have to rely on the radar and we can use it for ranging as well so if for instance we've got a target out there um, well there's some actual targets there it allows me to get slant range which is a physical range from my jet here to that target there and there's several modes of operation and I'm going to go through it as best I can and explain all of the controls as best I can. There's still a couple of black holes and hopefully when we get to those holes you, you guys can help fill me in. So first of all a 30 second idea on a radar. What is a radar? Radar is we've got essentially a dish in the front of the aircraft. It beams out radiation in a certain area known as our scan zone. That radiation hits things like mountains and ground and tanks and stuff like that. It reflects back to a receiver that we have and that is then translated into a visual reference here on our scope. And from that we can see these mountains and these things around us displayed graphically. So the first thing we're going to do is turn on our cockpit light because it is dark in here and it's hard to see. That one there does your cockpit light drag or mouse scroll wheel. Okay, so let's look at our controls. So our master panel here, here is our master mode. It can be off, it can be standby, it can be search, it can be terrain clearance, or it can be air to ground. Off is off. Standby is, it's not emitting, but it is warming up. You'll need to have it in standby for at least 30 seconds before you can start using the other modes. Hence, factor it into your starter called start procedure. In a nutshell, search allows us to search for terrain in front of us and gives us a top-down B-scope view, as it's called. Terrain clearance gives us more detail and control over search. The same thing as search, but more detail and control, and also allows us to do to use an what's called an e-scope, if you like, a side elevation cut through of the terrain. And our air to ground is going to be used for giving us a ranging, slant ranging information. We've got our angle of attack compensator button here. So this radar needs a reference to work to. Our reference is our flight path. So let's just say where my cursor is there. That's our flight path. That's where we're actually flying towards. But look how our, the nose here, the bore of the plane, is actually pointed up a bit. Well, the difference between that and where we're actually flying is called the angle of attack. And because that angle of attack will constantly vary depending on our speed, our weight and various things, we'll need our radar to, radar to automatically compensate for our angle of attack. You, hence, you'll never really want to switch that switch off unless you really know what you're doing. So basically, keep angle of attack compensation on. It will compensate for your angle of attack. We're going to get audio warnings through when the radar decides that we are in danger of crashing into a mountain or something. And this can change the volume of that warning here. And this is our manual radar antenna elevation. So imagine our dish in the front of our plane we can physically tilt it up and we can physically tilt it down if we want to look below us or look above us all radars whether they're air to air or air to ground will have a similar function which means that we can search to below us or above us without having to actually change the pitch of our aircraft okay so that's the master panel next we've got the b scope before we go to this the scope we've got a couple of buttons here this switch changes between between profile and plan plan is b scope looking from above Profile is e-scope looking from the side. And we've got our range changer. We can either have long range or short range. Onto the scope itself, this can either display in a B-scope for a plan view or an e-scope from the side. And we'll look at that a little bit later. It's monocolor, so it's just green on a black background. We've got some things. Uh, we've got the reticle adjuster here. I can't get that to do anything, so please let me know if you know what that does. We've got here a current distance set or current range set when in plan view. We've got a current range set here when in e-scope or side view we've got the gain here which i believe is the power of the radar beam we've got the detail here this will change the function of this will change depending on what mode we'll set so we'll go through that in a bit brilliance here in the inner knob um, i should say to get these pyramid knobs you either go in the center and then you use the mouse scroll wheel to change it or you can go to the outside there to get the other knob uh, brilliance is essentially just the brightness you might want them not, not want the brightness up so high if you're at night and storage is usually how long you store the radar signals for, for to be displayed on the B scope. However, I've had a play and I can't get it to do anything in this jet. So either it doesn't work yet or I'm just not using it properly. We've also got a red filter here that we can put down. Um, if you click on that, it will put this filter down. So let's get to work. Our radar has been in standby for more than 30 seconds, so it's ready to go. First thing we're going to do is put it in search mode. Right click on the master mode here. Out of interest, I'm also going to turn the volume up just so you can uh, make sure we can hear that when that happens. 
So with search mode, what's being displayed here is a plan view of the terrain that's within the radiation or the scan zone of the radar. And we need to have a bit of a talk about the scan zone for each of these modes. So the scan zone for search mode is first of all in azimuth 60 degrees. So that means it's searching 30 degrees to the left and it's and 30 degrees to the right. And the radiation beam that comes out of our radar is essentially scanning left and right and left and right in that 60 degree corridor. In terms of elevation, it's 5 degrees. So 2.5 degrees up, 2.5 degrees down from where we've set the antenna elevation. And we've currently got it on set on zero. So currently, it's centered where the plane is flying. And like I said, it's going to be somewhere about there where my cross is uh, showing. We don't have a marker because we don't have a proper HUD. We've only got a gun sign. So with, with that in mind, if you imagine a lateral line, five degrees high and 60 degrees wide, roughly where I'm scanning with my cursor here, then it's returning radar signals where our radiation beam hits the front faces of these mountains. It's in that plane of scan, it's returning this, and we're getting the top view. And we first of all got range we consider. We've got our range currently set here at 20 miles. So what that means is here is us, you know, that's us in that aeroplane. Here is zero miles. Here is 20 miles. And these lines divided by five. So four miles, eight miles, 12 miles, 16 miles, 20 miles. Out of interest, we can change that range here by going to long. We've now got 40 miles and, you know, that's 8, that's 16, that's 24, 32, or whatever it is, you know, up to 40 miles. Okay, put that back. And these are the returns that are coming back from our radar. And what we can see very roughly within our 5 degree by 60 degree beam is that we've got essentially a whole bunch of stuff in our return so if you imagine our box there five degrees tall 60 degrees wide we've got radar returns radar is bouncing off stuff and we can see it right here out of interest um you can see the the range we can tell the range for this mountain now note we've also got azimuth lines here so that's the center that's that's zero degrees azimuth that's six right that's 18 degrees right and that's 30 degrees right and that's left so what we could say for instance is that if we use the six degrees line left there well if we know that's four miles that's eight miles we know that's six degrees we know that if we look out a window look left eight degree uh, sorry six degrees then in exactly eight miles there is terrain so that way we can already tell that that mountain there that's what's coming back to us is eight miles from us now interestingly if we look right we can see that there's some there's some terrain coming from far away so if we look about that line there about 18 degrees to the right there is ret radar returns coming back all the way from up here for 20 18 to 20 miles and roughly looking out our window 18 degrees right it's going to be those hills there so i can tell you that those hills are between 18 and kind of 19 miles and that's how it works and you can see there's a tiny little return there, just a few degrees to the left, and that will be that little window of terrain. There's something in that little window of terrain, maybe that mountain in the background, that's bouncing back at exactly 20 miles. And that's how it works. Now watch what happens if I pull my aircraft up. So imagine my, um, my, slot, my slot window of 5 degrees by 60 degrees is now pointing at the sky above these mountains, and consequently we've got no returns. It's completely empty because there's nothing bouncing the radiation back. And to take it to the other string, extreme, stand by. Right, well now we've pointed it straight at the ground, so our radiation letterbox of 60 degrees by 5 degrees is right at the ground, and it's only literally, you know, half a mile away. And you can see massive returns just, you know, a mile or a couple of miles away. Uh, so that shows how that works. Okay, let's neutralise ourselves. So the next thing we can show, I'm just going to level out, is like I said, if we don't want to have to pitch our nose up and down to, to scan obstacles, terrain, we can just use the, uh, the uh, tilt control here. So if I want to scan um, 15 degrees down, I do that, let it update, and you can see the, the radar, I'm still heading at the horizon, but the radar is now looking down, and you can see it's terrain, you know, five miles away, just like we did when we pointed our nose. And obviously, as you can imagine, if I do it up to 10 plus 10 degrees, it's going to be completely blank because the letter box now 60 by 5 degrees is now pointing up like that. Okay, so that explains these returns you're going to get and how you can use it. So most of the time you're going to have it, everything to set to standard, angle of attack, compensation on, zero degrees. And we're going to be looking in this little 60 by 5 degrees letter box and that's going to help you to not run into mountains. Uh, we've got a similar thing on the Vigan, but obviously it's improved on the Vigan. It's a, you know, a, a, a more modern radar. That's all I want to show you in the search mode. Next, we're going to go to terrain clearance mode. I consider it like search mode, but you get a lot of extra features and you can configure it a lot more. Okay, so now we're in terrain clearance mode. 
let's talk about the scan zone again so it's a little bit different so again we've got an azimuth scan of 30 to 30 so that's a total width of 60 but the elevation is low no longer five degrees the elevation of that what i call my letterbox you know i like to imagine things in terms of shapes to help visualize it and the elevation of that letterbox can now be changed using the detail knob here now if it's completely wound down to the left it's five degrees if it's completely wound to the right clockwise it's half a degree and anything in between so uh, let's just see what we've got it as standard so that's our return as standard now i'm going to move it counterclockwise and we've now changed it so that it's five, the letterbox that's scanning is now a lot deeper, it's five degrees in elevation. And now we're gonna change it the other way and we can see that the, the returns will change a bit. Much more sparse return when I've made it completely clockwise right. We're only scanning a tiny little half degree elevation now and all we're doing is just clipping the top of those mountains at this point and you can see just a couple of returns. That one there at that mountain peak and that one there or that one there at that mountain peak. Yeah it's going to be that one there and that one there is all we're getting. Otherwise it's the same. We can pitch our plane down and pitch our plane up and we've got the same idea of return. Um, we also we've got the radar antenna here. It's flicked uh, elevation. It's flicked back to zero. Whenever you put it to terrain clearance it flicks back to zero. The other controls will work as usual we can do long and short again this time rather than 40 and 20 miles we've got 10 and 20 miles so it's a, it's it's closer in basically that's 20 that's 10 now with this mode as well as b scope we can go to e scope mode so this essentially instead of this becoming a top view it becomes a side view so we're going to go to profile we've now got a pretty cool thing let me just populate the radar quickly there we go right this takes a little bit of thinking about but once you've got your head around it it's solid so Instead of our plane being here, the top of our plane pointing that way, we're now looking from the side of the plane, a section view if you like, and our plane is facing that way. So this way is now the range, uh, and they're fifths again, so if we've got it in a total of 10 miles, then that's 2 miles, 4, 6, 8, 10 miles. And we can change that if we want to um, be uh, 20 miles, let's put it back. We'll go over the audio warnings in a minute. Um, and the up and down is no longer the range, the up and down is now the radar, um, what do you call it, the radar elevation. So that, so in this mode we no longer adjust this knob because in this mode the radar is no longer scanning left and right, it's now scanning up and down like thus. It goes up to plus 10 degrees and it goes down to minus 15 degrees, you can't change that and, and, and that is what is being displayed here. So again, this is the range, this is the radar elevation, plus 10 degrees up here, so that's the sky up there and that's the ground down there. Now here's where it gets a little bit funky. This line here is an imaginary line, the solid line here is an imaginary line and what that is is actually a straight line. It's actually a straight line that's level to our flight path. So our flight path is you know roughly over here. So that line simulates a, 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 a level line directly 1000 feet below us and parallel with our flight line. So you think, why, well, why is it curved like that? Well, that's because how the graph laid out. So once you've got your head around that, it all suddenly starts to make sense. So if we follow this bent line here, what we're actually following is a straight line level with our current path of motion. And these dots here, again, are our radar returns coming up from the mountains, but this time, if you like, in a side view. So we can say at this point, if we look down 15 degrees elevation, we would see land exactly what that is, two miles away. If we looked down five degrees elevation, so something like that, we would meet land at that point, which is about, I don't know, um, whatever that is, uh, 1.5 miles away. If we look directly level with our, our plane of motion, which is going to be about there, then it, we would meet terrain um, three miles away or something like that. It takes a while to get used to these scales. And if we look above zero, then all of a sudden there's no terrain at all because it goes above that mountain and we get to the sky. Now if I were to put my nose down, then the terrain now goes all the way up to the plus 10 because plus 10, which is about here, is also seeing terrain. And minus 15 is now right down there, so it's only like, you know, quarter of a mile away, uh, if you see what I mean. If this um, terrain here gets outside or on top of our imaginary thousand, mile, our thousand feet line here, then we get a warning. We get obstacle here lit up and we get the beep warning. How long that, that light comes on that and that um, beep comes on for is how dangerous the train is. It's how close to it now. So if it's really close and we're relatively close now, the beep will come on for a long time. 
if it's a long way away, 10 miles away or, 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 or whatever, um, um, just, well, not 10 miles away, but just not as far, then the beep will just be a beep, beep, like that. So that's something to bear in mind. At the end of the day, the name of the game is to keep the terrain here under our 1,000 feet line. If we can do that, that means we are flying constantly 1,000 feet above the terrain. Now that's impossible when you've got such undulating terrain of this, or it's difficult when you've got such undulating terrain of it as this. If you've got a nice flat terrain then you can, and you can't see anything, then you could use this to easily negotiate yourself 1,000 feet above the terrain. So I just want to show um, uh, uh, getting rid of this warning now by putting our terrain within our 1,000 feet safety line. So I'm going to fly up. Still warning us, still warning us, still warning us. And you see that beeps on for a long time now, saying it's close danger. And now look, suddenly as we've got in this plane of motion here, where the terrain is below our thousand feet safety line, suddenly no warning, you're safe. It's saying, you're fine, you're flying now 1,000 feet or above 1,000 feet above the terrain, everything cool, everything okay. Now there's a technique called let down. Um, I'm not going to show it because uh, this video is just going to go on and on if we show everything. But if you put this um, distance here to long, so we're at 20 miles, and you mark yourself out a five mile line. Uh, that's four, so that is five miles there, basically where that line is. If you keep the terrain, if you fly so that the terrain just intersects this line here, but never goes at more than the, down the safety line at a range of five miles, so that's there, then that's going to keep you flying exactly at... 1,000 feet above the terrain, that's the trick, that's what you're supposed to do. In very undulating terrain, that's almost impossible because you're constantly pitching up and pitching down and pitching up. But in general, you know, uh, less severe terrain, that's what you're supposed to do. So, that's the e-scope, that's how it works. I hope I've explained that. It was, took me a while to get my head around it, but that's that. Note that the detail does have a effect on the on the on this return. If I can find it, yeah, that, that detail. So we can change the scan. I believe it's the scan width in this case. We can change it between one and five degrees. Um, I don't really see much point where you'd ever want to, but that's a thing. You know, do you want to be in a directly little tiny little narrow corridor um, in terms of width, or do you want a few degrees in terms of width? Again, we've got a letterbox again, but this time it's it's two ways instead of sideways. So that's all I'd like to say about that. Now we're going to go to the air to ground mode um, and we're going to go and find some suitable terrain and I shall report back. So we're in air to ground mode now. The first thing you'll notice is that we've got this line scanning up and down and this is all we have. There's no option to change it. We can't change the distance. We can't change the profile. Uh, and this line tells us everything in terms of ranging. By scrolling up and down, it's in the first of two modes. That means it's in scan mode. So it's currently scanning for a piece of terrain to lock onto. That's what it wants to do. It wants to lock onto a piece of terrain and tell you the range. But to do that, you have to get within its parameters. Now, I don't fully understand what those parameters are. I just haven't had enough time to play around with it. But what you want to do is fly towards the ground at over, I believe, 10 degrees at a piece of terrain and hold your nose on that piece of terrain so it can acquire a lock on that terrain. When it acquires a lock on that terrain, this bar will stop scanning up and down and it will become in a static position. Its static position will tell us the distance between us and that piece of terrain. So first of all, we're going to go and try and lock onto a piece of terrain. This takes a bit of practice and I, I, I've got no real useful information to tell you what it is that you need to do to, to lock it onto it. So it really is, it's kind of practice yourself. And once you've done it, but once you've done it, you just know how it works. So I'm trying to find a bit of train I can lock onto. Is it going to be nice today or not? There we go. It's being nice. So uh, the maximum range of this scan is about seven miles in optimal conditions. Optimal conditions being, you know, everything weather, but mainly the terrain you're bouncing off on. You can see that this is suboptimal, whatever I've chosen here. And it's scanning not in quite in the ball sight of the plane here, but in the, as, uh, as with the other scan modes, in the plane of motion of the aircraft, which is going to be always below, well, usually below at the ball sight by a few degrees, probably about one degree. So it's going to be about somewhere out there is where our radar radiation is intercepting. It's got a lock because the radar has line to stop moving and it's telling us the distance. And it's telling that because this line is zero, 4,000. 8,000, 12,000, 16,000, 20,000 uh, yards from our plane. So if that's 4,000, that's about two and a half to 3,000. So that point there, that intersect point, is a slant range of about 3,000 yards from me to that. Now, if I can carry on now and try and keep my nose centered in the same position to keep the lock, I should be able to see that decrease. Yep, just about got that. And you can see the line's getting lower and lower and lower as the distance gets lower. 
So a radio, radio altimeter warning going off there. And you can see this right here, like quarter of a mile or uh, uh, about, I don't know, 300 kilometers it's showing. Uh, oh, come on, brain. It's about 300 yards it's showing something like that, which is about right from us to that piece of terrain there. That's all it does. I personally don't really see the, I haven't really seen the use of it. Uh, I can see how in theory it could be used to range in for a shrike shot or something like that. But because it's awkward to use, I just haven't, I just prefer to do it by eye. I don't know, maybe I'm doing it slightly wrong. Let me know what you think. Um, that if there's any more to it of that, as if there's anything I'm missing, I don't particularly see the use of it yet. I guess if you're in low visibility, visibility conditions, it allows you to uh, see the distance of a particular area but if you're in low visibility well, you wouldn't be able to see that area anyway so to, to, to line the plane up so I don't really see the point of it but there you go uh, that's everything what I cover it's an overview there's a couple of bits I've missed as ever but you know we don't want to go into maximum detail I hope that helps and see you later